平行線から遠のいてほら天気予報も当たんなくてこんなぐずった空に待って New seasons, new anime. Welcome everybody to the top 10 best spring anime 2020. My name is Misty slash Ganesia, and today I bring you not only the exclusive list for the spring lineup, but also my opinion on them that people drink up like a Louisiana church gospel. Not really. But as usual, this is a top 10 format, two in one. First one is for the brand new IPs, second one is for the sequels. We're gonna be in here for a while, so let's go. I mean, with the quarantine going on, it's not like you have anywhere to be. But that also mean I gotta find a whole extra image for the intro if I don't shut up and get on with it. I mean, not me personally, but my editor, and he has like 150 in store, so we can't spare one or two. <laughs> Number 10, Gleipnir. Man, I had such high expectations for this anime, and in the end, it left me with kind of a meh feeling. Picture Darwin's game kind of premise mixed with Darlin and Frank's in regard of the character relationship. Glimnir begins with a main character who for some reason can transform himself kind of like a werewolf but instead of one he turns into a giant mascot. He rescues a girl and she learns a secret but then they have to team up together to fight other mascot pairs to win coins in a survival kind of game. But Misty, how do they team up, you ask, by having the girl climb inside his body? Look, it's weird. It's got some odd sexual vibes and innuendos all the way through, and I don't know, I'm just not feeling it. The main girl is kind of a C word for me so far. <laughs> Number 9! Hokago Tebo Nishi. You've seen cute girls climb mountains. You've seen cute girls become waitresses. Now get ready for cute girls going fishing! Yeah, that's the entire premise of this show. But actually, it's pretty alright. I've never cared much for fishing myself, but the cast of characters is vibrant. And by the time I reached the end of the first episode, it left me actually wanting for more. Visually, the show is quite pleasing, the music is catchy, and the comical aspects are quite enjoyable all around. The story is about a girl who moves into the countryside and is coerced into joining the fishing club. Very reluctant at first, after she gives it a try, she finds it quite enjoyable. I'm guessing more episodes will teach you about different fishes. Fish. Fishies. Fishes. I never knew the plural form for this one. Fishes. Different fish. So I would class this show as some kind of moe infotainment for a very niche audience. Pick it up if you need some background noise or anything light. Number eight, Wave, listen to me. Speaking of Nisha's audience, this one is gonna speak to an even smaller crowd. Wave Listen to Me is a dialogue-heavy anime with a very unique sense of humor. The premise is about a girl who after getting dumped, she got drunk and called the local radio station to complain on the air. They liked her so much that they basically gave her a job, hosting one of their show. She has to receive messages from the audience and provide host-like reaction while pretending to do consultation in perilous situations such as fighting a bear. It's a comedy, but a very Japanese-like kind of comedy. I'd say the demographic for this one is more geared toward young adults, more so than teens. Good artwork, but again, incredibly dialogue-driven. Number 7. Millionaire Detective No, it's not Batman, I swear. He said, laughing awkwardly. I've never been too fond of detective anime, as they often just come back to the same thing. But in this one, you have an odd duo of a materialistic protagonist who must team up with your run-of-the-mill detective. And they must solve mysteries together when they come from very distinct backgrounds. There is truly not a lot to say about this one. Clashing personalities and mystery solving. Here you go. It's all I got out of the first episode, Zaisa. Number 
Number 6. Apare Ranman I saw the trailer for this anime and I instantly knew I was gonna like it. The premise is about two Japanese men, one is a samurai, the other is an eclectic engineer, who after getting stranded on the Pacific Ocean get rescued by an American ship and are brought back to Los Angeles towards the end of the 19th century. They involve themselves in a race through all of the United States that end on the other side of the continent in New York. Do you remember the cartoon that used to play in the 60s called Wacky Races? You probably didn't watch it when it aired, but they've done a bunch of reruns. It's pretty much that, honestly. It's like Dr. Stones meets the movie Redline. I don't know, I like it and I want to see where it goes. No pun intended. Because I'm enjoying it quite a lot so far. <laughs> Number 5. Otome Game Isekai anime come a dime the dozen in the last couple of years and I'm generally quick to judge them at face value because, to me, they come off as easy cash grab because everyone watched them, no matter how craptacular they are. Little thoughts are put into them and the Rising of the Shield hero kind are generally quite rare. In terms of isekai, you'll maybe get one or two good one in a year, and the rest is fun worthy trash. Now, what about Otome Game? Well, as usual, I went in with my initial Simon Cowell skepticism, but I was quite surprised. They did a fun spin on the matter. Instead of having the main protagonist reincarnated as the hero, she's actually the bad guy, and since the bad guy never wins, she tries to use her knowledge to steer a route where that can be possible for her. Give it a chance as far as Isekai goes, this one is a little bit above and beyond, I feel like. Number 4. Kakushi Goto Kakushi Goto is a wholesome Japanese type of comedy. The story is about a guy who's a manga artist, but what he draws is quite inappropriate. For example, one of his best titles is called Balls of Fury, just to give you an idea. And when he has a daughter, he decides to shelter her as much as possible from his job so that wouldn't tarnish her pure mindset. He's a very loving father and the whole thing is really sweet. It reminds me of the anime Aochan can't study except without all of the lewd aspect and being more focused on the wholesome relationship between the dad and his daughter. Comedy can be hit or miss. Japanese type of comedy tends to be very loud and explosive and sudden and like whoa look at this fish type of deal which isn't really what us westerners are into but that doesn't make it dull there are some pretty decent chuckles to have in here. Number 3. Yesterday wo Utate Despite its title, Sing Yesterday to Me is not about music. It's a really deep slice of life drama about young adults starting their adult life. A romantic drama between four people, two guys, two girls, with a rich and complex personality setup. This anime is based on a manga that ran from 1997 to 2015, and considering it will have a particularly odd amount number of episodes, aka 18, my guess is we will have the entire deal in one season. This is gonna be a character-focused anime, heavy on relationship drama and dialogue between the core cast. If you enjoyed the anime True Tears half as much as I did, you're gonna love this one. Number 2. BNA Brand New Animal Studio Trigger's latest masterpiece. I think we've reached a point where whenever Trigger is making a new show, we all know it's gonna be killer. Story-wise, it can often be hit or miss, but you know when it got that Trigger stamp of approval, you're in for a wild ride, at least visually. And BNA is no exception. There's a bit of a furry trend since Zootopia hit the scene a couple of years ago, where you have anthropomorphic characters that have a more prevalent role in shows, such as in Beastars, for example. But in BNA, you have the story of beastmen's and humans living very divided lifestyles. Michiru, the main girl character, finds herself transformed into a beastman and witness the explosion in Anima City's town square. 
She teams up with a wolfman to pursue the criminals. It's a dark action anime, high octane, and pretty nice overall, at least so far. <laughs> And finally, the number one spot goes to Tower of God. Do not, by any means, begin to watch this anime. I cannot stress this enough. If you liked Hunter x Hunter, uh, you're gonna binge watch this bitch. Don't test what I'm saying. Don't go like, well, one episode can't hurt. You will get sunk in it like quicksand. First off, the soundtrack, straight fire. Visually, eh, it's an acquired taste. There's some nice effect, but the lack of shadows on characters make them flat and it can be a little off-putting for some who visuals can be a deal-breaker. But the story, at least so far, is very reminiscent of Hunter Hunter's Hunter's Exam. Main character is a power simp, biggest simp I've seen in anime, and he's looking for a girl and he has to climb floors in a tower. It's binge-worthy. I warn you, one last time, don't get involved until it's all out, because you will regret having to wait every week for a new episode. <laughs> and don't you forget, we still have to go through the sequels now. Usually, I try to do my best to put 10 in there as well, for balance, but if I'm honest with you, I just don't see a universe where people care past number eight, and even number eight is a stretch, like, you have to be a complete pervert to go and watch that one. I mean, not me, I do it for the job, <laughs> he said, sweating nervously as a team six was about to burst his door open. Anyway, yeah, number eight, Tsugu Tsugu Momo. Second season of that show where an object becomes a girl and she's naked most of the time and then there's other girls who are also enough and naked for no reason. It's your typical edgy comedy, but now with more episodes. Number 7, Major Seconds Season 2. Let me repeat that, this is Major Seconds Season 2. Meaning if you've never heard of this franchise before, you would have to watch Major 1, which is 6 season or 150 something plus episodes. And then you can watch Major 2nd and then Season 2 of that. It's good, but unless you've been keeping up with the franchise, very unlikely people are gonna pick it up. Number 6, Idolish 7 Season 2. As far as idol anime goes, this is probably one of the rare shows that I feel goes above and beyond. It's criminally underrated, but that's due to the niche demographic it appeals to. Still great characters with a very solid storyline that showcase the behind the scene of the idol lot. I like it a great deal, but I always enjoy a show that reveals the curtain of certain jobs. Number 5, Food Wars Season 5. Look, I love Food War as much as the next guy, probably more than your average amateur cook, but even I can see when a show has run its course. Season 4 was perfect ending to the franchise, anything past that is kind of optional, really. Like the final thing I want to see is either Soma or Hirako get into Arena's pants. Someone's gotta get in there, and if you think Hirako's not a good rival for Soma, you gotta see that lesbian sexual tension between the two because god damn my gaydar is chiming like crazy. Number 4, Ascendance of a Bookworm Season 2. Kind of a dark horse, you heard me talk about isekais already. Well, Ascendance was a show that I didn't expect much from, and the wholesomeness just won me over. It's more of that good feeling if you've been setting it back. Now's a great time to get into it. Fruit Basket Season 2. The remake of Fruit Basket that came out in 2019 is now getting another season. That's the tit. Number 2, Kingdom Season 3. I never thought I'd see the day where we would get another season of Kingdom, but if you've never looked into it before, this is an anime about war. War of epic proportion. Chinese war though, not sure if that matters to you, but regardless, this is a very hype one for me. And finally, the number one best sequel of the spring 2020 season is Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 2. Yes, it is finally getting a Season 2. It's Light vs. L, but as a romantic comedy instead. Yeah, who am I kidding? My gaydar wasn't wrong for Food Wars, and it wasn't wrong for the sexual tension between Death Note's character either. Kaguya-sama, great show. Glad to see a Season 2 already. <laughs> And that's the list for both new shows and sequels. What is it that you're watching this season? Personally, I'm going to keep up with Tower of God because I'm already one foot in. I had to take one for the team and now they this is, got, they got me, they sucked me in it. And also Food Wars, possibly the fishing one because I don't know, I just feel it. The rest I'll try to hold off until they're done airing so I can binge them all in one go. Yeah, so I am a high roller at Vegas. 
Why do you ask? Anyway, that's just how I do things, otherwise I confuse the timelines, but it makes it that I can't recall every show that I've ever seen. It's a weird superpower. Subscribe if you're new to my channel and you somehow hand into here. I will have a bunch of fun content for you around next time if you're down for that. And if you are already subscribed, then I guess I'll catch you guys next time. I've been on the wrong side, I've been ashamed So many memories, you know I'd like to change yeah.